check, check, check. All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is me, I am Tung, and today we have a comparison video going on between these two bad boys right here. 35 millimeter F14 versus the newly coveted 33 millimeter F14. It's so hot here in Hawaii. I don't want to turn on the AC because, you know, the sound. I can't open the balcony door also because it's like, you know, the sound. Let's start with the build quality. With the 35 millimeter F14, the build quality is not that great compared to the 33 millimeter. When you hold on to it, it does feel a little light. It doesn't feel as premium as the 33 millimeter F14 and so it feels a little flimsy. It doesn't feel like it holds and I do have issues where sometimes when I'm going on the shoots, um, I'm not paying attention. Uh, the aperture does get knocked down uh, like a few stops and it gets quite annoying. And also with the 35 millimeter F1.4, it is not weather resistant. The new Fujifilm lens, the 33 millimeter, it is weather sealed, which makes it a lot better when you go out and you know, you try to shoot things. Here in Hawaii, I am by the water all the time. There's a lot of sand and grain, right? So it's just nice to uh, take this, the 33 millimeter out uh, to play with just because I, for my peace of mind, I, I know that uh, this is a weather, weather resistance and I know that nothing's going to happen to it, hopefully. <laughs> the 33 millimeter F1.4, it's built like the 18, the new 18 millimeter F1.4. You know, it has the same tools. It has the same aperture ring right here where, you know, you can pl put it into A mode and then you can control the aperture from the front dial of your Fujifilm camera. I think they're going to have this on all, on all new models moving forward. A complaint that I had with the 18 millimeter F1.4 was that the aperture ring was a little bit flimsy as well. It was loose and it was not something that you want on a brand new lens. I guess Fujifilm heard our, <laughs> heard our complaints and now they made it a lot better on the 33 millimeter F1.4. You know, there's a lot of dampening into it. It has a good, good amount of resistance to it. And I feel that with this aperture ring, you're, you're not gonna knock it out of place. So for build quality, the new 33 millimeter takes it in that category. If I sweat throughout this video, you'll know why. It's just so damn hot in here. Let's move on to the autofocusing, okay? So the 35 millimeter F1.4 is a lot slower to focus than on the 33 millimeter F1.4. Granted, like you can still get good shots if you use single point autofocus on the 35 millimeter F1.4. However, once you start uh, changing that to the eye autofocusing, the face tracking, or any anything to do with um, tracking, the 35 millimeter struggles so much. And that's one of the problems with this lens right now. It's going to struggle to keep up with any kind of movements. The autofocusing on the 33 millimeter F1.4, however, um, is probably one of the best autofocusing lens that I've seen implemented in the Fujifilm uh, lens lineup. Ah, fuck. The way it uh, focuses is quick and snappy. The way it can track a person's face while it, and, moving, uh, and moving subjects is probably like the stickiest I've seen uh, on a Fujifilm lens. Like the other lenses aren't as sticky as this, okay? And, and we all know that the, one of the best focusing lenses out there on the market right now is like the 90 millimeter F2 or the 50 to 140 millimeter f2.8. I think uh, this lens right here is probably the best autofocusing system Fujifilm has implemented. So that says a lot. When I was shooting with this lens, I was so surprised by how good and how quick it grabs focus. And when I, sh when I shot uh, my friend's baby, like the baby was moving around a lot. The eye and the face tracking was surprisingly uh, sticky to the baby and there was like no issues or no hiccups at all, which is really, really amazing. <laughs> so I was quite impressed with the autofocusing on the 33 millimeter. So in that regard, the 33 millimeter wins in autofocusing. That should be no surprise because it is 
a newer lens whereas the 35 millimeter is like freaking 10 years old so i have to turn on the air conditionings because it's so damn hot in this place so forgive me if the if the room sounds a little bit weird all right so let's move on to the image quality with the image quality it's going to be subjective on what it is that you like the 33 millimeter has a sharper a sharper cleaner look to it uh, but at the end of the day, it's all subjective on what it is that you want and what is it what it is that you like. The 35 millimeter f1.4 produces some great uh, images. Uh, it's still one of my favorite lenses to use. The characteristics, the softness around the picture, just reminds me of like a film, filmy look to it. There's like a there's like a sort of some sort of grain to the image. Uh, it has that Fuji magic that everyone. Uh, talks about like there's something special going on in this lens. I can't put my hands on it But it is there and I really <laughs> I really enjoy shooting photos with this with this lens this lens the 33 millimeter f1.4 It's a lot sharper. It looks a lot cleaner Like the bokeh is so much smoother on the 33 millimeter f1.4 than it is on the 35 I am I'm a, I'm a fan of the bokeh on this I just love how the image just looks really clean and really sharp. It looks like a modern lens. Whereas this, you know, you can say the imperfections is a part of the, the charm and the characteristics of the lens. If you really like, if you like a softer image, if you like that uh, filmic look, then this is, um, this is a good lens to choose from. At the end of the day, it's both subjective on what you like. So I'm going to give image quality a tie if you want to know which one is the sharper lens the 33 millimeter is the sharpest lens out of the two who are both of these lenses for okay i would say if you're a more photo centric photo centric shooter i would suggest this lens right here the 35 millimeter f1.4 it still gets the job done some of my favorite shots comes from this lens. If you're someone that is that doesn't care about the quick autofocusing, then yeah, this thing still gets the job done. 35 millimeter f1.4 is still an all-around great lens. It's still a great lens in 2021, moving to 2022. If you're a hybrid shooter, right, and you do a little bit of video, I would suggest this lens because of like the faster autofocusing. It's really sticky and I noticed that when I was shooting like Hillary, when I was shooting like our friend's baby, like the way it moves and the way it attracts the human subject, it's really good and it's, I've never seen a lens do that before. This is the best autofocusing lens that you can get from the Fuji system. So if you're doing a lot of video work, if you're doing weddings and you need to track people, uh, track the bride and the groom like this will have no problem sticking sticking on to the subjects it's really really good and if you're someone that wants a sharper cleaner image uh, this lens is the lens to get it's it produces some great images but um, it's lacking the characteristics of this lens but that doesn't mean that this lens has shitty image quality. This is pretty, pretty good. I'm having a lot more fun shooting with this lens than I thought I was. I thought it was just going to be like an 18 millimeter F1.4 where I just felt like it was a good lens, but I didn't feel, I felt meh about it. I really enjoy shooting with this lens and I'm enjoying my time taking this lens around the island. And just that autofocusing, man, it's just so freaking clutch. It surprises me. The only problem I find with this lens is just like the supply chain. I've, I've been hearing that it's hard for people to get this lens in their, in their local town. I've been told that some people have to wait until 2022. So there's that. So it's like really hard to get this lens right about now so that's going to be an issue for a lot of people out there in the world so you're just going to have to wait because of this whole like chip shortage thing that's going on with this lens right you can get this lens on a really good deal in the used market people are always selling this lens i picked this lens up for like 475 dollars canadian which is like a fucking steal because i think online it's selling for like six 600 bucks USD or something like that. So it's still a fair amount of change. That's about it for me guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this little 
comparison video. I've only been shooting with this uh, a lens for like a couple of weeks now so I still haven't finalized my thoughts on to make a review of so so if you want to see the review make sure to subscribe to the channel and then you'll get you'll see the review of this lens coming soon but overall my thoughts is this lens is pretty damn good hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and once again my name is Tung and I'll see you in the next video I love you